What could possibly shake the foundations of American politics and the public's trust in government to its core? It's a question that echoes through the annals of history, reverberating with the significance of an unparalleled scandal. Picture 1972, an era defined by a struggle for power, a quest for truth, and a fight for justice. It was a time when a political drama unfolded that would forever change the landscape of American politics. This drama, known as the Watergate scandal, was an event that sent shockwaves through not just the United States, but the entire world. It was a scandal that reached the highest echelons of power, reaching into the Oval Office itself, tainting the presidency and shattering public trust like never before. It's a tale of deceit, cover-ups, and the relentless pursuit of truth. This is the story of the Watergate scandal, a political drama that shocked the nation and shook the world. The saga begins on June 17, 1972, with a seemingly ordinary break-in at the Democratic National Committee headquarters in the Watergate complex. A group of five men, wearing business suits and rubber gloves, were apprehended in the middle of the night. They were caught with a variety of burglary tools and electronic bugging equipment. This was no ordinary burglary. The men had ties to a shadowy organization known as the Committee to Re-elect the President, or CRP. This was not a ragtag group of criminals. These were men with connections, men with a purpose. Among them was James McCord, a former CIA agent and the security coordinator for CRP. The others were anti-Castro Cuban exiles and a locksmith. The connections to CRP raised eyebrows. Why would a group linked to President Nixon's re-election campaign break into the offices of the Democratic National Committee? Initially, the Nixon administration dismissed the break-in as a third-rate burglary. They denied any involvement painting the burglars as rogue operatives. The reactions were a mix of skepticism and disbelief. The media initially reported it as a strange but isolated incident. The public, preoccupied with the ongoing Vietnam War and a struggling economy, paid little attention. Yet, some journalists were not so quick to dismiss the story. They saw something more in this break-in, a mystery that needed unraveling. The Nixon administration, however, was quick to distance themselves from the break-in. They launched a massive cover-up operation, destroying documents and paying hush money to the burglars. The aim was clear to prevent any links between the break-in and the White House from being exposed. But as the saying goes, the cover-up is often worse than the crime. The Nixon administration's attempts to bury the scandal only served to fan the flames of suspicion. It was the beginning of a chain of events that would ultimately lead to the downfall of a president. Little did anyone know, this was just the tip of the iceberg. As the authorities delved deeper into the case, Two determined reporters, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, began their own investigation. This was no ordinary case and these were no ordinary reporters. They were young, hungry for truth, and at the helm of one of America's most influential newspapers, The Washington Post. Woodward and Bernstein were initially assigned to cover what seemed like a minor break-in at the Democratic National Committee headquarters, located in the Watergate complex. But as they peeled back the layers, they stumbled upon a conspiracy that reached the highest echelons of power. Their investigation was characterized by painstaking research, dogged determination and a commitment to unearthing the truth no matter how unpalatable it might be. They sifted through countless documents, chased leads and interviewed sources, all while navigating a political landscape that was increasingly hostile to their work. But perhaps the most intriguing part of their investigation was their anonymous source known only as Deep Throat. This mysterious individual, a high-ranking official within the government, provided critical information that kept the reporters on the trail. The clandestine meetings in underground parking lots, the coded messages, it all reads like a spy novel. But this was real life, and the stakes were incredibly high. Despite facing immense pressure and criticism, Woodward and Bernstein remained steadfast. Their reporting kept the Watergate scandal in the public eye, prompting further investigations and eventually leading to the formation of a special prosecutor's office. In their pursuit of truth, these two reporters exemplified the power and importance of a free press. They held the powerful accountable, refusing to back down even when the odds were stacked against them. They were the embodiment of the journalistic ethos, to seek truth and report it, minimizing harm, acting independently, and being accountable and transparent. Their relentless pursuit of truth would eventually lead to a shocking revelation, a revelation that would shake the foundations of American politics and forever change the nation's perception of its leaders. But that's a story for the next scene. 
While the investigators were closing in, the Nixon administration was desperately trying to keep the lid on the scandal. The stakes were high, and so were the tensions. As the Watergate investigation intensified, the cover-up efforts by the Nixon administration became increasingly desperate. President Nixon was no stranger to the game of politics. He understood the power of perception and the danger of damaging information. So he tried to contain the scandal to control the narrative. But the truth, as they say, has a way of surfacing. One of the most infamous chapters in this saga was the Saturday Night Massacre. It was a night in October 1973, when Nixon made an audacious move to protect his presidency. Attorney General Elliot Richardson and his deputy William Ruckelshaus were ordered by Nixon to fire the special prosecutor Archibald Cox, who was getting dangerously close to the truth. Both men refused and resigned in protest. It was Solicitor General Robert Bork, third in command at the Department of Justice, who finally carried out the president's orders. But the Saturday night massacre backfired. It raised more questions, spurred public outrage, and only intensified the scrutiny of Nixon's actions. The unraveling of the cover-up didn't stop there. A bombshell revelation came when Alexander Butterfield, a former White House aide, disclosed the existence of a secret taping system in the Oval Office. These tapes would prove to be Nixon's undoing. They contained candid conversations that implicated the president in the cover-up and contradicted his claims of innocence. The tapes were a smoking gun, evidence that Nixon had not only known about the Watergate break-in, but had actively participated in the cover-up. The revelation of the tapes was a turning point in the Watergate scandal. It was the nail in the coffin for Nixon's presidency. His desperate attempts to keep the scandal under wraps had only served to expose his guilt. The walls were closing in on Nixon, and his presidency was hanging by a thread. The cover-up had failed, and the truth was out. The Watergate scandal was about to claim its biggest casualty, the President of the United States. On August 8, 1974, faced with almost certain impeachment, Nixon did the unthinkable. In a televised address to the nation, he announced his resignation, becoming the first U.S. president to ever resign from office. Gerald Ford, his vice president, stepped into the role and, in a controversial move, granted Nixon a full pardon for any crimes he might have committed against the United States while president. Yet, Nixon's resignation marked just the beginning of the aftermath. Several of his close aides faced criminal charges, the likes of John Ehrlichman, H.R. Haldeman, and John Mitchell, once powerful figures in American politics, were convicted and sentenced to prison. The scandal also triggered a seismic shift in American politics. The public's trust in government, already shaky due to the Vietnam War, plummeted. Many began to view their leaders with skepticism, questioning their integrity and motivations. A new wave of reform washed over the political landscape, leading to significant changes in campaign financing and greater scrutiny of political activities. It was a turning point in the nation's approach to government transparency and accountability. Congress enacted the Ethics in Government Act of 1978, which created mandatory public disclosure of financial and employment history of public officials and their immediate families. The Freedom of Information Act was also strengthened, further promoting transparency. The Watergate scandal served as a stark reminder of the potential for corruption at the highest levels of power and the importance of holding our leaders accountable. It underscored the role of a free press in maintaining a healthy democracy as two dogged reporters from the Washington Post, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, were instrumental in uncovering the truth. The Watergate scandal left an indelible mark on American politics, a reminder of the importance of accountability and the power of truth. It continues to resonate today, a lesson from history on the dangers of unchecked power and the resilience of democratic institutions when faced with adversity. Today, the Watergate scandal serves as an enduring symbol of political corruption and the resilience of American democracy. It underscored the importance of free press and the role of investigative journalism in holding those in power accountable, while highlighting the strength of our democratic institutions and the rule of law. Yet, it also shook the nation's faith in its leadership, leaving a lasting imprint on American politics. The scandal led to increased transparency, with more stringent checks and balances put in place to prevent such abuses of power in the future, it served as a stark reminder that no one, not even the president, is above the law. The Watergate scandal also sparked a national conversation about the limits of presidential power, the importance of government accountability, and the role of the citizen in demanding transparency from those in power. 
As we look back at this pivotal moment in history, we are reminded of the words of Thomas Jefferson, when the people fear their government, there is tyranny. When the government fears the people, there is liberty.